Today I have the Bluetti AC2A. It is the newest, smallest, and lightest portable power station in Bluetti's lineup. And although this is Bluetti's smallest power station ever, it still packs quite a punch. So in today's video, we're gonna find out exactly what this thing can power and the limits of this device. Because I know that if you're looking at a power station like this, you really wanna know what can this little thing do? Over the past several years, Bluetti has made some really awesome power stations. And with every iteration, things get a little better. So before we get into the full test of this power station, there are two features I'd like to point out that I really like so far. First is the availability of a grounding wire. So this did come with a grounding screw and you can truly ground this power station, which makes this much safer when you're plugged into a wall and putting a lot of power through it. And then number two is that you can access every function in the device without using the Bluetooth app. It does have Bluetooth connectivity, but unlike other devices like the EB3A, you do not need to access the Bluetooth app to change some of those functions. The AC2A accepts up to 570 watts of input, but that's through 270 watts from the AC wall outlet combined with 200 watts from the solar panel input. So to get those 570 watts, you will have to have both of those devices connected as well as maximize that solar input. We'll see a little later that it can be a little difficult to reach that 200 watts of input unless you have the ideal solar panel configuration. Over on the bottom right, we do have our standard 12 volt, 120 watt outlet. Moving down to the USB panel, we have one 100 watt USB-C and two 12 to 15 watt USB-A outlets. The star function of the AC2A is this 300 watt inverter. This is rated at 300 watts continuous or up to 600 watts for surging. And it does support X boost mode and we will test that feature a little later in the video. There are two features that I normally find on these smaller Blue Eddies that this one doesn't have. The first feature is a flashlight and the second feature I usually see on these Blue Eddies is wireless charging. Now we're gonna play with all the features in the menu to customize this so it's perfect for my needs as I go through my testing. Cycling through all of the functions of this device is very easy. First, I'm gonna turn on the device, then I'm gonna hold down both the AC and DC buttons for at least two seconds. 1,000, 1,000, and now I have P01. This function allows me to pick whether I want to be in 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Here in the US, we want to leave that on 60 hertz. P03 gives us the ability to put on turbo charging mode. So if I want turbo charging off, I'll turn that off. If I want turbo charging on, I'll turn that on. I do want to point out that there is also a silent charging mode, which I don't see the icon for that here. So that might be one feature that we can't access unless we have the Bluetooth app. But standard mode is okay for the battery. Turbo charging mode can cause a little bit of damage to the battery. So they recommend that if you don't need quick access to power to turn turbo charging mode off. I'm gonna leave it on because I am gonna test that feature in a little bit. Pressing the button again brings us to number four, which is our power lifting mode. Power lifting mode is perfect for cooking with hot plates and things like that, up to 600 watts of power. I'm gonna leave power lifting mode on, which is this little bicep emoji up here in the center of the screen. Pushing the DC button one more time allows us to cycle eco on or eco off. I'm gonna go ahead and leave eco on for now. Eco mode will allow the device to shut down when it's not in use. P6, you can turn Bluetooth on or off. I'm gonna leave it on because I'm gonna use Bluetooth later. But if you don't plan to use Bluetooth for your device, you may wanna cycle it off and it might save a little bit of power when you're in standby mode. Now that I've cycled through all the options, I wanna press and hold the DC and AC button again so that I can ensure that my settings are saved. If I don't save the settings, the menu will eventually close out and none of your changes will be saved. So you have to depress that again to save those settings. If this video is helping you learn more about the Blue Eddy AC2A, please give me a thumbs up and leave some feedback in the comments, good or bad. 
The Bluetti AC2A comes with just about everything you need to get started on your adventure. First, it comes with a user manual, and the user manual is plain and simple and easy to understand. It does tell you about all those functions that we cycled through in the menu earlier. So put this aside because you might need it later if you want to go back and refresh on how to use all those functions. On top of that, this manual also has a lot of troubleshooting instructions. So if your device starts to act up, you can use this manual to figure out what's going on with it. The next thing in the box is this XT60 to MC4 cable. This is what you would use to connect to your solar panel. I do want to point out that this is a standard XT60 adapter and not an XT60i. That won't make a big deal for a lot of our applications, but it's just simply a way to connect the device. The final cable included in the box is your standard computer monitor uh, charging cable. This cable is just over five feet long and it should be sufficient to get you charged up while you're on the go. One thing not included in the box is a DC car charging cable. I don't usually use those DC car charging cables anyway because they're usually limited to about 100 watts. In fact, this one is limited to 96 watts while charging from a car. So if charging with your car is something that you're interested in doing, make sure you pick up that cable while you're checking out. With the AC wall outlet, there are three recharging modes. I'm gonna start with silent mode, then I'm gonna work my way up to standard mode, and then finally turbo charging mode. As described, in silent mode, I'm getting about 90 watts into the power station and none of the fans have kicked on yet. So I'm going to go ahead and push it into standard mode. As soon as the device went into standard mode, I did hear the small fan kick on and I'm getting about 137 watts into the power station. Now we're going to go into turbo mode and I should get close to that maximum 270 watts of input in turbo mode. The volume of the fan increased just slightly it is by no means overpowering me or something that I could not live with running near me in the close proximity. In addition to that, I banged straight up to 268 watts of input. So I would say that you can get that 270 watts into the power station. Fluetti claims that while using turbocharging mode, you can go from zero to 80% in about 45 minutes. And by putting 270 watts into this 204.8 watt hour battery, I believe that you can get there in that amount of time. I'm going to let this recharge the rest of the way so that I can go through and do my battery discharge test and my AC inverter tests. Before I do a complete battery capacity discharge test and then recharge test, I want to see how well this thing operates with various devices plugged in. Here I have my 16 inch MacBook that pulls quite a bit of power. The USB-C cable on this MacBook can pull up to about 140 watts. So what I want to do is plug this in and see if the USB-C will pull at least the 100 watts that it's rated at. Currently at 70%, we're banging up to 90. Now I'll give it a second to level out. And it looks like we're getting 91 watts from this USB-C outlet. I don't know if that's a function of the MacBook protecting this outlet because it's not an Apple certified outlet, or if the device is limited to 91 watts. Now I'm gonna hook up a battery charger and just see if I can top off that 100 watt total outlet from the DC devices. So it looks like maybe the USB-C outlet has been lowered and then the USB-A outlet is pulling something. So I'm gonna disconnect the USB-C and see what's coming out of the USB-A. The USB-A outlets for this device are rated at 2.4 amps and five volts or around 12 watts. And we're pulling 11 watts directly from one of these USB-A outlets. So I wanted to see if I can maximize that output on those two USB-A outlets. So I have this, this iPad that's almost completely discharged and between those two devices, we're pulling about 22 watts or about 11 watts per outlet. So that's very close to that 12 watt rating for those USB-A outlets. Now I'm gonna plug in that 100 watt cable one more time just to see if I can get over 100 watts or closer to 100 watts. And there it goes, it's bumping up right there. 113 watts from all those outlets. So, I think that's a function of the state of charge of the laptop here, pulling a little less or a little more depending on its state of charge. But we're definitely getting over 100 watts out of the USB panel. Another note is because I'm pulling so much power, the fan is cycling on and off. So to me, that works as expected. Now, because this thing is rated at 300 watts continuous or 
up to 600 watts in power lifting mode. I'm gonna hook up my little egg cooker. I make eggs with this while I'm out camping and this thing pulls around 300 watts. So what I wanna see first is, will it function with all of these USB-A outlets turned on? And if so, will it last a few minutes? Now I don't wanna run this too long because it is dry right now and it's not meant to be ran dry, but, but it'll either run or it won't. Right there, we did trigger the overload protection. It's still running, but the DC overload protection turned on. That's kind of interesting. So let me turn that off. Now I'm gonna just put some water in here and let this run for a minute and see how it runs with the water in it. All right, so we bumped straight up to that 269 watts. The next thing I wanna try is, will the USB-C work so it pretty much instantly triggers the overload protection on the DC outlet. So you can't run this with all of the maximum capability pulled out of it. I'm gonna try one more time with these USB-A hooked up because these USB-A's are not pulling as much power. So let's see what we have. And I have to be careful because this little egg boiler has a little jet of steam that comes out right here. And if I'm leaning over it, I don't wanna get burnt. So we are able to pull from the USB-A outlets while the AC inverter is pulling pretty close to its maximum capacity. So I think somewhere around there is the limit of what you can actually pull from this device. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my egg cooker. The egg cooker for this scenario pulls around 270 watts and at 270 watts, I would burn through this battery in probably 40 minutes. The next thing I wanna test is this Dash Mini Toaster Oven. This thing is designed to pull around 550 watts. So theoretically in power lifting mode, this thing should operate, but this does have a startup voltage or a startup wattage that could trip the circuit. So it seemed to run for about 10 seconds. I would think with the powerlifting mode that the EB3A should be able to run this device, but apparently it does not. So unfortunately there will be no making toast with your AC2A at your campsite. So what that means is with the AC2A, you can charge your phones, you can charge your laptop a couple of times. You really can't boil water with this but you can use something that pulls around 300 watts. So the egg cooker would be about the biggest device that I would hook into this. In addition to that, I would be careful with trying to run multiple devices out of all of the outlets at the same time. Now I'm gonna top off the AC2A one last time so I can do the battery rundown test. All right guys, I tried to find something that pulled about 40 watts, but the closest I could get was 60 watts or 30 watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the 30 watts with the small turbo fan, and that'll be as close to that 0.2C as I can get. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this device to see how many kilowatt hours I get. And to start that test, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this thing at the same time that I unhook the wall outlet. So the device is currently at 100%. When I reset this and unplug it, it'll run until it dies. And when it dies, I'll know how long it ran for and how much power came out of this power station. We got 142 watt hours from this 204.8 watt hour battery, which that comes in at just under 70% conversion from the battery into the device here. Some of the reasons for that is the energy conversion required to go from the internal battery to the 110 volts that's coming out of the battery. So 70% is a little on the low side for conversion, but that makes sense because we have a small battery that's converting energy up to 110 volts. My recommendation is to avoid using the AC inverter unless you absolutely have to. For example, my laptop has that USB-C cable, but it also has an AC adapter. It's much more efficient to use the USB-C outlet than it is to use that AC outlet. Now we're gonna find out how close we can get to that 200 watt maximum input on the AC2A. Here I have a 220 watt solar panel, which is just slightly over paneled, but because the sun is not very high here in mid-October, I don't feel like I'm gonna overpower the solar panel that much. Let's see what we get. 
turned on immediately. So maximizing the solar panel input for the AC2A requires two things. First, you have to have the appropriate voltage, and then you also have to have the appropriate amperage. The AC2A accepts a maximum of 28 volts, eight amps, and 200 watts. So your panel has to match that combination. For example, to get that 200 watts max into the AC2A, you're gonna have to get close to that maximum voltage and maximum amperage to get the 200 watts. In this case, I'm able to put in about 160 watts right now with this solar panel. And if I wanted to put more power in, I'm gonna probably have to add another panel that gets close to that 28 volts and eight amp output. I do have some thoughts on who this is perfect for and what kind of uses you might get out of it. So if you're someone who is thinking about getting this so that maybe in your apartment, when the power goes out, you have the ability to recharge your phone, maybe charge a laptop, possibly run your internet router for a couple of hours, this thing would be perfect. If you're planning to go camping and you don't wanna have a full off-grid setup, but again, you wanna charge phones or recharge any other small electronic devices, then this is the perfect solution for you. This is Blue Eddy's smallest power station to date, and so it should also come with the smallest price. To find out the current price or about any updates, click on the link in the video description. Blue Eddy did send me this power station for a complete test and review. They did not pay me to make this review and they don't control anything that I say. If you found my video useful, please consider subscribing. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much for joining my team. Now, watch this video to find out a little more about the Blue Eddy EB3A.